in the United States every day, people die. That's the circle of life. You're born and then you're going to die. How many, how many deaths are there in the United States every day? Just in our country. 3,000, 5,000, or 10? Who says 3? Who says 5? Who says 10? Yeah. Almost 10,000. You know what's really a shame? Almost one-fourth of that number of those who go into eternity are the babies that have been aborted. Almost 2,500 every, every day and every day and every day. Shame, isn't it? You've heard this before, but it bears repeating. In fact, you might remember when I first said it, but ch chances are you won't. <laughs> From 1963 to 1970, there was a show on TV every week. It was called Petticoat Junction. You remember Kate? And Billy Joe and Bobby Joe and Betty Joe and Uncle Joe. Yeah, you remember Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe was a lazy, windy, had the ability to stretch the truth kind of guy. Kate sent Uncle Joe to church one time. Now, those of you who remember the show, what was Uncle Joe's favorite thing to do? He slept. He was one of the world's greatest sleepers. Kate sent him to church one time, and when he got there, of course, he went to sleep. After church was over, he went back to the Shady Rest Hotel, which was run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. Kate asked him, said, what did the preacher preach about? Well, Joe said it was a good sermon. She said, but what did he preach about? And Joe thought, and finally he said, sin. <laughs> well, what exactly did he say? And Joe said, he was against it. <laughs> By the way, the fellow that played Uncle Joe, Edgar Buchanan, you know what he did before he became an actor? He had a successful dentist practice. He was a he was a practicing dentist before he became, a, became an actor. Anyway, Joe said, the preacher proclaimed that he was again sin. We ought to be again sin. Because sin is the great separator. That sin separates is evident. In fact, if we go back almost to the very beginning of time, we find sin... Separating. It was in the Garden of Eden. The Lord God places man and woman. He gives them the very simple command that there is a tree in the midst of the garden known as the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye even touch it, for in the day that ye eat thereof, God says, you shall surely die. Then along comes the devil in the form of a serpent. And the devil speaks to Eve. And the devil says to Eve, You shall not surely die. Remember? One little word. Three, three little letters. What an insignificant word and yet consider the drastic result of listening to the evil one and heeding those, those three little letters. Now the devil did not introduce anything that we would call drastic here. Drastic would have been if, if the devil would have said, there is no God. Well, Adam and Eve knew better than that. They knew that that's not possible because 
They knew that there was a God. They had been with God. God was their creator. The devil didn't say, well, God hasn't given you any commands because they had heard with their own ears what God had said. You shall not eat of or even touch that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for in the day that you do that you'll die. He just simply added, the devil just simply added three little letters. That's what a lot of person do, do to a lot of what a lot of people do today. The people don't come out, well, some of them do, but the majority of the people don't come out and say there is no God because we know better than that. We've seen his handiwork. We go outside at night, we see the stars during the day, we go out, we see the sky and we see the the clouds that are there, we see the beauty of the world and that all proclaims that there is a God in heaven for He was the one that created them all. And if a person proclaimed there is no God, the majority of us would reject that immediately. If a person taught that the Bible was nothing more than a fairy tale with no bearing on anybody today, the majority of the people in the world would reject that because they know better. So what do preachers do? Well, they just very slowly begin to alter the beliefs of people. Nothing drastic, just, just slowly. Even last year, within members of the Churches of Christ throughout the United States, I've been able to read where some of the congregations permit women, well, we'll let them serve communion. That's not really in a position of authority. And so they let, they let women serve communion. And then you know what that leads to? Well, the next thing is, well, we'll let the women lead prayer. And so they do. Just a little step up, you see. Not a drastic change, just a, a little step up. And then they say, well, since she can lead prayer, we'll also let her teach Sunday school class because teaching a Sunday school class isn't like preaching. So they let her do that. And then it got to the point where they said, well, she can teach Sunday school class. You know, if our regular preacher's not here, she can fill in for him. And then you know what that led to? Congregations of the Churches of Christ that have women preachers full-time capacity. Well, that's happening today. The changes that are coming are coming in slowly, but they're coming. Changes from that which is right and scriptural. And, and really that's what the devil did in the Garden of Eden. Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, gave it to her husband, and he did eat. And doing thus, they both sinned against God. And you know what the result was? They got separated. That's what death is. As a body without the spirit is dead, James says. So faith without works is dead. When your soul leaves your body, guess what? You're dead. Physically, you're dead. Well, when Adam and Eve got separated from God because of the sin that was there, then they spiritually died. They both became separated from their Creator. You know, before that, God and His creation, man, walked and talked together in that beautiful garden, but now those days were over. Sin had raised its ugly head as the great separator. Cast from the garden away from the tree of life, man in this separation saw weeds grow and his labor became intensive to the point that he would now, now eat bread in the sweat of his face. Woman would have pain in childbirth and eventually Adam and Eve both would die. All brought in as a result of the great separator, sin. Sin doing what it does. Separating man from God bringing death upon the world, and believe it or not, sin does the same thing even yet today. It's in Genesis chapter 6, we again can read the results of that great separator, sin. This record of history is somewhere around 4,000 years ago. Mankind has been on the face of the earth 
at that time, around 2,000 years. And by that time, man had become horribly evil. The descendants of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, and the one through whom the Messiah would eventually come, intermarried with the descendants of Cain, who were continually an ungodly race. Instead of the descendants of Seth, the good one, changing the descendants of Cain, the evil one, to do good, the descendants of Cain changed the descendants of Seth into those who did evil. That's still usually the case. 1 Corinthians 15.33, the Bible says in the New Testament, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. The word evil there that's found in this verse, the word evil means not as it ought to be. Not as it ought to be. The word communications that is up there means companionship or communion. The word corrupt means depraved. And the word manners means morals. In other words, what the writer is saying, what the inspired writer is saying, he says if you have companionship that is not the type you should have, it's going to deprave you or make your morals wicked. Fellowship of like-minded, spiritual-minded people builds up one's morals. Fellowship with immoral people can probably and will destroy one's morals. Well, that's what happened in the days of Noah. The lifestyle of the ungodly people changed the lifestyle of the godly people into just the opposite of what they should be. Mankind became separated from his Creator. Became so separated from his Creator that the Bible says in Genesis 6.6 6, that it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Thus the Lord God decided, I'm going to destroy all of mankind from the face of the earth, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Built that ark according to God's plans. He and his family, along with a male and a female from every critter in whom the breath of life was, entered that ark and the rains came. And according to Genesis 7, 22, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died, animals and people. Thus, due to man being so sinful that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, man became separated from God. Instead of a close relationship, man became alienated from his Creator. And that's what sin does. Sin separates. Listen to the words of the, one of the major prophets, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah says this, he says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. It's not that God can't. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. The word hear there means listen. Listen. It's not that God can't hear it's that God decides not to. Any of you decide not to listen whenever somebody else talks? I, I like that saying on Facebook. The other day my wife said to me, you never listen to a thing I say, do you? And I thought, boy, that's a strange way to begin a conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's not that God cannot hear the words of a sinful person. The fact is, God decides, I just will not listen to those prayers. What does this do to the idea of the sinner's prayer as a means whereby one may obtain salvation? Remember the words of the man who had been blind since birth and had been healed by our precious Lord? He said in John 9, 31, we know that God heareth not sinners. If God doesn't hear sinners, if God won't listen to the prayers of a sinner, as Isaiah the prophet proclaimed, 
then how in the world could he ever forgive a sinner who comes to him in prayer? You know, we find example after example in the Word of God who those who of those who became Christians in the New Testament, and not one time do we find them praying to receive that much needed salvation. Instead, what do we find? Well, as Tommy spoke many times this morning, Mark 16, 16, what Jesus said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that goeth to the altar and gets down on his knees and prays shall be saved. Nope, Jesus said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Peter proclaimed in Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Ananias the preacher said to Saul of Tarsus in Acts 22.16, And now why tarriest thou rise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. We read in the inspired writer writing of 1 Peter 3.21, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Prayer won't save the sinner, the one who is separated from his Creator by the horrible enemy a man called sin. Micah was a minor prophet. His name means who's like God. <laughs> There's none like God. It was wrote around the year 723 B.C. Primarily, he writes about the fall of Samaria. The nation, had, the nation of Samaria had taken Israel into captivity. And so Micah says, well, it's a captivity, but it's not going to last forever. They're going to fall. And they do. They did. But then Micah goes on and condemns the rulers of God's own people, Israel because of their unfaithfulness that had brought about the captivity by the Syrians in the very first place. Micah says Samaria invaded Israel. The leaders of Israel cried out to God that their sins had separated them from God. And guess what? Micah writes in Micah 3 and verse 4, Then shall they cry unto the Lord, they who? The leaders of Israel who are wanting the nation of Samaria to be taken away from them and them not be under their bondage any longer. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but He will not hear them. He will even hide His face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Ill means evilly or wickedly. These men acted and lived wickedly, and God would not hear their petition. Sin had separated the leaders of Israel from their Creator, and as a result, God refused to hear them. What in the world's all that got to do with us today, right? Well, there's a judgment day coming. Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, Jesus talks about this great judgment day, and He describes it as a shepherd who gets all of his flocks together. And he separates those flocks. He separates the sheep from the goats. He puts the sheep on his right hand and he puts the goats on his left hand. And he says that the ones on his right hand are the good ones and the ones on his left hand are the bad ones. And he says that's what the judgment day is going to be like. He says that the great judge is going to judge people and some will be over on his right hand and some will be over on his left hand. Those on his right hand, the good ones, the ones who have lived according to the way that they were to live according to God's laws, they're going to hear these words. They're going to hear, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And those on the left hand, those who have not lived according to the laws of God, they're going to hear, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28 and 29, He said, The hour is coming into which all that are in the grave shall hear His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good to the resurrection of life. They that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. There is a judgment day coming. At that judgment day, we're all going to hear our eternal judges ruling based entirely upon the way that we've lived here upon this earth. 
We're either going to hear heaven or we're going to hear hell. There's no other possibility. Eternity awaits for us all. In the closing verse of Jesus speaking that, about that judgment day, He makes a statement, Matthew 25, 46. He says, These, the one on the left hand, shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Sin separates. Sin condemns us to that horrible place called hell, a torment for eternity, time without end. Now, let's consider this. James, the physical brother of Jesus, wrote in James chapter 4 and verse 17. He says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. There's a reason I wanted this verse read. We have folks today who are not Christians, have never been baptized for the remission of their sins, have never put on Christ, have never been added to the family of God by their obedience. And yet they know it's the right thing to do. They know the right thing to do is to become a Christian, a child of God. It's the good thing to do. 1 Timothy 2.4 Paul writes to Timothy and says that God our Savior would have, He wants all men, He would have all men to be saved and to come unto a knowledge of the truth. So to be saved is the good thing to do. But if you know to do good and don't do it, to you it is sin, and sin separates. If we don't do that which we should do, we're living a life of sin. Separated from our Creator. Listen, don't be separated from the King of Kings, our Creator. Don't enter eternity apart from the One who died for you. If you're not a Christian, you can pray all you want to. That's not going to bring salvation. That's not God's plan. Become a child of God today by being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Leave this building no longer separated from God Himself. If you're subject to the invitation, we pray that you'll respond to it while we all stand.